The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 26th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? Yep, let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening uh, for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. Just past one o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for you for your presence here. But more importantly than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone like John and Philly has done. You can call us at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email at steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in our Tiger's Den. Any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, markets in the green to the upside. The weakest would be the Russell 2000 up only about 50 cents spot volatility index back 10 pennies but still above its 50-day exponential moving average gold is off four bucks and that's where we're going to begin the day by going and speaking with john and philly and discussing gold john thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you on wonderful wednesday hey uh wonderful wednesday too bad it is not weird wally wednesday <laughs> but hey i'm well, speaking to you so uh it could get weird it could uh, it could Steve, I wanted to ask you uh, if you can help me uh, with some shorter-term work on this gold rally. Uh, Steve, you and I have spoke uh, privately over the past months where I began employing your uh, the tool you discovered, the, uh, the utility from a trader's perspective on stock indices of using – apogee and perigee pivots, that lunar cycle uh, tool. And, uh, of course, uh, we've had the discussions where I've started applying that and looking to see if it's as useful uh, as a, uh, a technical tool uh, on COMEX gold and silver futures. And the bottom line is, over these past months, I have concluded it is useful. Okay. Anyway. Uh, gold has rallied uh, so strongly, as we all know. It's pulled back. It's just now in day two of a pullback. Uh, we have uh, the Osaka G20 meeting right in front of us, and I, I have my suspicions as to what's really going on there, but let's, let's leave that aside and make this observation, Steve, that the decline in the gold futures 1443 down to 1405 in two days' time, uh, as far as the number of dollars per ounce in a correction, this is amongst the biggest uh, during the past weeks. And what's really interesting to me, Steve, is this. The apogee pivot for August gold futures is 1403. Well, we went down to 14.05 this morning, and, of course, we bounced a little bit. Nothing conclusive, but that level has been tested and held. So I'm wondering if you can share with us if there's any other uh, technical work that's in your arsenal that we can hang our hat on to, uh, to, to look to in support of the idea that uh, 
uh, a pullback to this 1405 or something close could in fact be a, uh, a completed pullback followed almost immediately by higher highs. So if you've got something to share on that score, I'd be much obliged. Sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And you mentioned short term. So we'll go take a look at some short term um, uh, charting timeframes out there and see what their message is. Uh, first, what I want to do for the listeners out there is uh, John was referring to the perigee and apogee pivot points. Now, perigee is the lunar phase during the current cycle. Uh, where the moon is furthest from Earth, and apogee would be during the cycle when the moon is closest to Earth. And over the weekend, sometime on Sunday, John, I don't recall the time, but it was during non-market trading hours, uh, was when that perigee lunar phase arrived. Over a weekend, what I do is, because I'm never sure of where this hidden level of support or resistance is at, uh, it's either the close of Friday's session or it's the open of Sunday's session. Uh, right now, John has pegged the open of Sunday's session as being the number. There they're both relatively close. The close of Friday was 1400.10 and the open on Sunday, 1403.90. We won't uh, worry about the change out there. So in essence, the message that I'm hearing John say is because this has worked, I haven't, uh, I haven't followed apogee and perigee as to the gold contract as much as John has, but uh, we know how good of a, of a, of a trader and knowledge that he uh, comprises. And so we, we have to believe him. So John, First question I would pose back to not not to answer the second because I'll but but I would if if gold were to close below 1400 let's say right now um, and I know you're looking at it from the long side buying pullbacks from the long side would you change course but before you answer that question because you I want to specifically provide you with some additional information maybe that influences your question or not so I'll step back from the daily chart that we have here and just go to the five hour chart uh, of course we don't have a 25 hour day but that for whatever reason, you and uh, Bob, Saratoga Bob, identified the importance of the five-hour time frame. So let's take a look at that. In the five-hour time frame for gold, the chart that we have up on our screen, uh, it was generating, or it did generate yesterday, uh, a uh, price relative strength divergent pattern, the Rose Momentum Indicator Signal. Did that when this bear, bearish engulfing bear sash candle arrived at 9 o'clock. Now, what price has done since then, whenever I get a topping signal, what that means, folks, it doesn't mean back up the truck and go short. It means anticipate that the market is going to pull back. It could just be a normal retracement. In essence, that's the question that John is asking. Is this morning's pullback just a normal retracement to support? He's using the perigee pivot point as one level. And in that instance, we have to say yes. If we take a look at the five hour time frame chart, the first level of support, or really there's a couple levels of support that are out here that, that tie into each other. The first would be the bottom of the five hour profile. John, that was at 1408.20. When we take a look at profiles, it's on a closing basis versus an interest session time period. That level held. And just below that was the most recent breakout of gold on a five hour time frame that began at 2300 hours on June 23rd. And that low was 1403. 60 and that is set up by that red dash line so i'll say that 140360 level is tying right into your perigee pivot point and if you were to get a close below both of those the signal to me would be to look at gold from the short side not the long side we're out of time but we're going to be right back and we'll further discuss gold with john we'll take a look at the 30 minute maybe the 60 minute time frame but get his answer what will he do if price of gold closes below perigee? We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with John in Philly. And, John, I just want to uh, post a couple other charts out there for you um, to uh, to consider. So when we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for gold, we were looking at this yesterday. It might have been Brent uh, in Martinez, California. Uh, and he was looking for a, a topping signal. And as long as the price of gold closes above 1396 90 today and right now we're trading at 1413 then we will have or it will have generated a, a td setup nine count bars eight nine or the bar following nine at a high can be a can be a topping pattern plus we have the a to b equals cd to the upside now um we don't have the end of the week so i will show you the weekly chart out here if we did end up with a bearish reversal signal right now we've got a shooting star pattern but it's only wednesday if we did then this would say the a to b equals cd to the upside has completed and anticipate a pullback the last thing that I'll throw out here for you, how do we know if the move to the downside is over and there's more rally to come? For me, it would be a close above, oh, this is silver. I meant to grab gold, so let me grab the gold chart out here. Um, in gold, the price point is 1427.90. That happens to be the most recent TD setup nine count on a 30 minute basis to the downside that began at 630 last evening. So price for me would have to close above that. The support line was the, TD, the most recent TD setup nine count. And that price point, which uh, price broke through last night, was 1417.90, which is acting old support right now, is acting as resistance. So those are all the numbers that I have. The question I was asking you, based on this information, um, if you were to see price close below perigee, how does that change your trading tactics, if any? Oh, we lost John? Well, that's a bummer. We can't get the answer to that question. Okay, well, those are the numbers for gold. So here, I'm just going to summarize it uh, for you, uh, folks. Uh, sorry about that, that the uh, TF in the line dropped it, but that's fine out here. John, you're welcome to call back in. No problem. Uh, but um, these are the numbers. So right now here in the 30-minute chart for gold, what we see here is a series of lower lows and a series of lower highs out here. Uh, but again, for me, on the short term, the price of gold would have to close above 1427.90, 
um, in order to suggest that uh, today's low and pullback to your perigee pivot point was nothing more than a test of support out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to that uh, trade out there. Um, let me just check and uh, see if there's any uh, requests out here that have come in. And if not, we'll go right to the uh, right to the general market. So no requests here. So let's take a look at the general markets and try to get a fi uh, feel for try to get a feel for for where we're at right now. So what is it that Stevie is looking at? The first thing that I'm paying attention to, and you already know this, yesterday's close was an interesting close for the New York Stock Exchange. Both conditions that I had shared with you last night that would indicate a change of trend were achieved. And that was a combination of uh, the advanced decline oscillator reading closing below zero. The actual reading at the close yesterday was, um, where is it? Minus 27.67. Right now we're at minus basically 13 out here. Now, with regard to the advanced decline oscillator, this is what I have found that is most important. Quite frankly, folks, it's no different than everything you and I do in life which is if you're going to do something, make sure you have follow through. That's how I approach trading. Uh, the bearish reversal signal that we, or bullish reversal signal to confirm a top or a bottom must have follow through on the next session to really confirm what it is that you're seeing. In the advanced decline oscillator, that follow through is a continued close below zero. If this were to close at 122, we'd say there's a problem in River City. In other words, expect a further pullback out here because we're still below minus zero com combined with combined with the spot volatility index closing above its 50-day exponential moving average. Yesterday, the close was 1620. The 1575 level was the 50-day exponential moving average. Right now, it's 1575. That's still what the 50-day uh, uh, exponential moving average is, and we're trading at 1620. So you've got both of those conditions. Okay, so why isn't Stevie jumping on the short train just yet? And the reason is, is because there's other levels of support that, quite frankly, were so close to that need to be busted to be able to confirm that being on the short side of the trade is the correct side of the trade. What do you mean by that, Stevo? Okay, here's what I mean specifically. First is... When we're taking a look at the advanced decline oscillator, it's dealing with market breadth for the New York Stock Exchange. Now what I'm going to look at, when we're taking a look at the spot volatility index, we're really referencing the S&P 500. Well, voila. I have, and you could too, I believe that today's the last day to get an extraordinary deal on the uh, TAS market breadth profile uh, type system out here. And here's the market breadth for the daily chart for the S&P 500. What you can see as of 123, exactly as of 123 in the afternoon, is 137 components for the S&P 500 are trading above the top of their box. In other words, bullish. And 131, only six less, are trading below the bottom of their box. In other words, bearish out here. When you get a crossover, a crossover says, okay, possible change in trend. When was the last crossover that we received inside of the S&P 500, the bullish case that was on June 4th? Now, with this being so close to each other, kissing cousins almost, so to speak, out here, wouldn't you wait for the crossover to the downside as an additional confirmation? Well, Stevie would. And you should, too. And, in fact, the you should, too, is get over to the homepage at TFNN.com and try the uh, TAS market profile system. You, I use it. I, I, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine trading without understanding where support or resistance is in order to be able to help you for whatever time frame it is that you trade, identify where those hidden levels of support or resistance are and when they get broken to make it much easier to put the odds or the probability on your side that you're doing the right thing. To me, doing the right thing would be waiting to see if there's a crossover here. What else is there? There's one last component to this piece of the puzzle. There could be two. I'll give you the options out here. The options. Oh, what did I do there? I almost closed this thing out. No, I just wanted to change my workspace out here. So for those that don't pay attention to the equity futures contracts, and if you don't pay attention, you're trading the S&P 500 or the Dow or the NASDAQ or the Russell 2000, the question you should be asking yourself is why? Why aren't you following the instrument that's really giving you the best patterns out here? Look, in the S&P 500, you would want to pay attention to Stevie's green line right now. That's at 29.15. That's the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line represents 
um, the price level, the price would have to be at a price sitting right on it. It tells us the price oscillator is moving sideways. If price is above that level, and the price oscillator, by the way, is a difference between two exponential moving averages, 19 and 39. And when it's above zero and price is rising above zero, it's bullish. And that's what we have. That's where I've got my line chain color going from red to green. Green tells us the price oscillator, so we don't have to go figure. And the price oscillator, you can typically use your MACD tool. You can just look in at the MACD line. You can put in 19 and 39. Just make sure that it's not following the original MACD rules, which would be simple moving averages. Do something simple. What kind of results are you going to get? Mm, yeah. Exponentially, if you do it, oh, it's a much better thing. 2915 is the number. I'll give you the number for the ES Mini. We get back from this break, and then we'll take all the questions that you write in on. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So back to the ES Mini. The level in the ES Mini, this way you can be paying attention to the uh, equity futures overnight, um, and you'll be watching to see where price is trading. Inside the ES Mini, the number that we're going to go with is 29.10. Now, Stevie's red line, which has been tested today, is 29.19. But at 29.10, we've got what I believe is the bottom of the uh, daily uh, TAS market profile. And so it closed below both of those, combined with the spot volatility X being above its 50 
today. The New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator being below zero. And if we get that crossover on the S&P 500, well, that's about all that you can ask for as far as signals. We can't control what happens next. We can only control what we do with the information we have now. But the information that we would have now then would say, OK, at least the S&P 500 and the New York Stock Exchange want to continue to pull back. So those would be the levels that I would be uh, watching. So let's go to a couple of questions that we have out here. The first one coming in from Victor. Victor says, hey, Steve, first time connection. Well, uh, hey, Victor, uh, uh, nice to uh, nice to speak to you by email. I was wondering what your take is on the SMH. It's been lagging for some time now. Uh, is it finally in play? And uh, I'm, I'm grateful that you're enjoying the, the show. So let's go take a look at the SMHs. Now, Victor, when you ask me to look at the SMHs, and here's your three time frames out here. Uh, here's your daily, your weekly, and your monthly time frame. What the daily time frame shows us for the SMH specifically, that's the ETF, folks, for the semiconductor ETF. What you're going to see is prices right up against resistance. Resistance is the top of that profile, 108.80. Now, if price can close over 108.80, by the way, we're at 108. 884. Is four pennies going to blow your skirt up or my skirt up? The answer there is no. So we need like a real close. And I'd have to say it has to be a close above its prior swing point from just a few days ago, which is 109.20. So let's just say if we get a close above 109.20, then yeah, it's in play. In fact, there could be an A to B equals CD to the upside. The B put of this trade takes you back to June 11th, 8 million shares. Today, you're at 5.2. Um, that would say, uh, yeah, close above. Um a close above this 109.20 level would say you've got an A to B equal C to the upside. Now, interestingly enough, and when you're asking me to take a look at the ETF, what I like to really do is go back to the underlying instrument, and that's the SOX index. What is the SOX index communicating to you and I? So if we pull over the daily time frame chart, what we're also going to see here is that price is right up against resistance. It's a different resistance line. So it's really nice about the SMH and then the semiconductor index. Uh, because here I don't have the profiles on this indice. But what I do have is we've got Stevie's other tools and indicators. For example, when the semiconductor index made its high, it did it with wave number seven. That's letter number G. It, and it also did it with a TD setup nine count. It was bar number eight. Now, when the semis made their most recent low, coincidence, it made it with wave number seven, letter G, and a TD setup nine count being bar number eight. How does that stuff work? Now, that set up the bottom. But like all bottoms, you then have to understand where resistance is. Well, that's very clear because we use that TD setup resistance line. That's where price broke down. That's the green solid line on my system. That's from the trading day of May 17th or the high out there of 1436.15. We're trading right now at 1436.13. What? So. Here's my answer to you, Victor, and I appreciate that you enjoy the show and maybe some of these strange or weird Wally, as uh, as uh, John in the Tiger's Den would say, uh, you know, things that I throw out there. But here's the deal. You can't take a trade now. You, if you were going to take any trade, you'd consider going short. I'm not suggesting that you go short, especially since we just took a look at the volume inside the SMH, and we'll use that as to what's going on. But price is really up against resistance as we speak. You close above these levels. Again, let me give you the level inside the semiconductor index. Well, the level of Stevie's green line is priced at 13, 1436.15. Um, but we're really going to say you've got to close above 1441.39 to be in play out there. And then its next level of resistance is from the high from May 6 out here at 1545.34. So it may be in play, but you're right up against resistance. This would be the wrong time to put your money at risk. And if it does close above that, then what you're doing is you're going ahead and trading a breakaway, a breakout trade. They don't always work, but but you'd at least have you'd at least know that certain levels of resistance have failed and you made a bottom earlier and price should continue to move higher. So hope that helps you out with regard to the SMHs and uh, what it is that uh, they appear to be doing out there. So thanks for writing in. Uh, let's go to the next question that came in. The next question coming from Michael P. While you are talking about gold, can you also identify resistance areas? So. Michael, here's the deal on, on resistance, I believe, for Goldilocks. It's really this chart here. 
This chart, which is a monthly time frame chart, shows you and I just how extraordinarily important the price point of 1434 is. Now, you may say it's not that important, but I'm suggesting to you that it is very important out there. We really had, in essence, three resistance levels on the way up, 1361, 1392, and 1434. A close above 1434 this week, this month, this quarter, because everything ends on this Friday, a close above that, then would say gold could run to 1798.10, which would be its next swing point. Am I forecasting that gold is going to 1798.10? No. What I'm really saying is be gosh darn careful. You Please, you can't have me in one conversation respond to Victor and say the SMHs are up at resistance and now is the time to take that trade. I didn't say that. I said, if anything, you would look at shorting it because price is sitting right at resistance. I suggested not doing that because of the volume metric inside the SMH. But resistance is resistance. You were asking about resistance, and that is what the price of gold has done. It hit that resistance level. What is more likely to happen is gold is going to pull back. And this pullback, if you hang with this pullback, you're going to hate gold. You're going to say, God Darn it. You know what I, you were thinking of saying. I had it at the top at 1434. I've ridden it all the way down to 1205. Yeah, 1205, that's a number out there, possibly the 1200 ish level. Only to find, and then really hate it, get the Sam Heck out of Dodge, only to find out that that was really the buying time. That's nothing more than the longer term trend line from 2015 and then tagging the bottom of August of 2018 out there. Am I saying that's what gold is going to do? I'm saying right now that the charts for gold, Michael, they got topping signals. They've got that TD set up nine count. As long as price closes above 1396.90. And now, thanks to John and the Tiger's Den, we can use our perigee pivot point and some others to say, you know what? If gold closes below that, you really don't want to be long. Now, that's my impression. That's my signal. That's what I would suggest out there. John might have a different idea. Um, but I will share with you that price is up against significant resistance inside of gold. Those are the numbers out here. So just be careful. I'm not saying to exit your trade. I'm saying to use a stop, not a mental stop. Because you know what happens with mental stops? We go mental. We say, price just blew through it. Now what do I do? Maybe it'll bounce. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Don't leave it to chance. Just put in a stop in your mining trades or your gold trades out there. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. It's time in our segment to talk Bitcoin, digital currency with Ralph in Arlington, Texas. Ralph, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Do we have Ralph? I got nothing in my ear studio. Ralph, Arlington, Texas, Bitcoin. Uh, guess he dropped. Okay, well, I don't know what the question was. Um, uh, right now, Bitcoin, if we take a look at the futures contract, trading out at 13,405. I don't know what the question was, so not really sure where to go with that. So let's go to some uh, other questions. Maybe Ralph will give us a call back and we'll be happy to discuss uh, Bitcoin. Let's go to HD. HD is thinking about going long the energy sector, XLE. So let's go take a look at the XLE. Let's take a look at its three different time frames just to uh, gauge where price is trading in relationship to its uh, profiles out here. So let me get rid of some of these retracements. So we can see that right now uh, price is trading into the top of its daily profile out here. And so that level is 63.78. You'd really like to see price close over 63.78 to continue this upward momentum out here. Um, what else is going to impact what else is going to impact the XLE? Well, certainly it would be Lightsweed Crude. So let's peek in on Lightsweed Crude. It's trading out at 59.44. It's up a buck 61. A buck 61. When we take a look at the uh, current contract here, price is trading above resistance. Resistance here. Let's pull this over so that you can see it. Um, and I'll change the uh, retracement levels from green to yellow. We just have too much green out here, so we can make one easy change there. There we go. So as we take a look at uh, when I say price is trading over resistance i'm referring to its weekly time frame profile 59.17 of course it's wednesday not friday so we don't know if price is going to close above this level come friday but right now price is trading above that resistance level suggesting that price wants to get to 60.33 the point 618 retracement level well the high so far today is 59.93 that's really not that far away, is it? It's 43 cents away. Um, but but things do look pretty good here. So what would stop me from taking a trade in the XLE as we speak? Well, if we look at the XLE specifically, um, what price needs to do out here is so close to resistance. Resistance is where this most recently broke down. That takes us to May 22nd out here. That's Stevie's solid green line. That represents the high of that TD setup nine count to the downside. And that level is measured at 64.28. So I, I cannot suggest taking a long trade in XLE being so close to resistance out here. It just now, if price were to pull back to 61.90, Steve's red line, well, maybe that is one possibility. Um, at 61.90, we're not, any near, uh, not anywhere near the top of its uh, daily profile out here. Um, what else can Stevie go look at? 
to take a look at inside of light sweet crude. How about a 30 minute time frame chart out here? Well, the 30 minute time frame chart, Mr. Bill and I were taking a peek at this a peek at this this morning. And um, and we suggested that, hey, caution, caution will Robinson. And the reason we said caution will Robinson was because right here at 11 o'clock this morning, what we both noticed was actually what we noticed here on a 30 minute basis was at 1030 this morning, we noticed that the TD setup nine count on a 30 minute basis was in effect and that the bar following bar number nine was making a higher high and that could have been a short term top. Turns out Mr. Bill was right. It was a short term top. That's just simply how this pattern works. Look at bars eight, nine or 10 out there and make sure you understand the configuration, the pattern and so on and so forth. But at this stage here, um, ideally on a 30 minute basis, if you really have a hankering for taking that trade, let price pull all the way back to uh, 5871. That's the that's the bottom of that. That's the low of that TD setup nine count to the upside out there. That would be a support level. Now pulling back to that area wouldn't be too shabby because of that wide ranging bar you have from 1700 hours back here on June the 25th out there. So that's how I would take a look at XLE. You're just too close right now to resistance. Um, to go ahead and take that trade as far as I can, uh, as far as I could see. If price breaks through resistance, well, then what you're looking for is we would just simply look to the top of the weekly profile, and that's 65.80. See, the, the average true range for the last 10 days is 98 cents. We can't use 98 cents for a stop. You've got to use some multiplication factor greater than that, 1.272 or 1.618. The more volatile the market, the wider the stop. All that using a wide stop means is you have fewer shares. It doesn't change the trade. The one thing you and I can control, the only thing we can control, is how much we risk on any one trade or investment out there. If you use the 1% rule, this rule, folks, was uh, is, is something that I was tasked to develop back in 19... 79, 1979, 1980, and it was uh, using VisiCalc. It wasn't even VisiCalc. What was the first calc out there? Might have been VisiCalc. Actually, I first had to do it on a spreadsheet, and then we got some some uh, Apple PCs. We got a, a, an IBM PC in the office, and I was tasked with 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 trying to identify what's the best way to 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 take a look at risk in trading markets out there. And uh, that's where uh, the 1% rule was developed. All the 1% rule does, you just go back and mathematically do this yourself. Go back and mathematically do this yourself. Take whatever size portfolio you want. Doesn't matter whether it's $100, $10,000, $1,000,000, It's all the same. But take 1% of that value. That is what you're risking. Assume that you lose on that trade, then take 1% of what's left over, and then assume you lose on that trade, and 1% of what's left over. Assume you lose. You have to, I don't remember the number off the top of my head. It's something like you need I'm 300. It's not exactly 300. Don't write into me. Do the work yourself. It's something like 300. It's not like I'm saying it's 150 and it's like 300, I mean, it's like 300 or 368 or 268 or some of trades you would have to have in a row to burn through all your capital. Now, no one is going to do that. And this is trading and investing is about protecting capital. Now, what I mean by 1%, let's just say you got a portfolio of 100 grand. 1% is what? $1,000. $1,000 is all you're going to risk on the trade. If your stop is wider, 1000 bucks is going to determine or begin to determine how many shares you're going to buy. How many shares are you going to buy? You're going to figure out what your stop is. Your stop has got to be at least the average true range. The average true range is just the average movement over 10 days. That's normal breathing for the XLE, in this case here, 98 cents. We'll call it a buck. So really, the stop would have to be a buck 68, I'm saying. So you take the $1,000 divided by a buck 68. That is how many shares you would purchase. Now, the one exception to that rule, this was brought to me, this was pointed out to me by my favorite polar bear. He said, oh, well, Hold your horses, Steve-O. I like the thought process here, but if this is an individual stock and you use your you use your position sizing 
and then your total capital outlay, I get the risk part, but if your total capital outlay is more than 10% on one stock, do you really want to do that? And I said, you know, David, you're one smart guy. And the answer there is no. So then you'd even buy fewer shares, not adjust your stop. Maybe your risk is only a half a percent. Position sizing, folks, there is nothing more important to protecting your capital. Learn about it. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, next question coming in from Tim. Tim wants to take a look at Incana Corp. ECA is a Turkish symbol. Uh, Tim is looking for a good entry price. Well, Tim, if you're looking to get into Incana, now is the time. ECA is a ticker symbol. The reason that we say that is the way that markets make bottoms, or at least the way that markets make bottoms that are worth taking a, uh, a risk on, uh, is certainly the Rhodes Momentum Indicator symbol signal. And that took place here on June the 18th, when prices moved lower, doing less relative energy, and you had a piercing candle. Now, the benefit here is that you did have follow-through on that next session. Remember, we talked about earlier the importance of follow-through on a bullish reversal signal. Well, you got that the next day, and you also got to close above Stevie's red line. So you're trading at 508 as we speak right now. Price may be targeting all the way up here. This TD setup nine-count resistance level, uh, that area is priced at uh, 680.